Today we want to talk about our faulty logic process and how that often keeps us from making changes in our life. Hello, this is Ron Ovid, Mr. Change Agent. I'm a recovery coach, pastor, counselor, and president of Empower Ministry. Did you know that thinking can stop us from changing? <laughs> That's right. So many times the way we think keeps us from making the changes we need to make. It falls under the category of automatic thinking. But just because it's automatic doesn't mean that it's right. It could be a faulty logical process. But hey, there's hope. What we need to do is create a renewed thinking process. Now what are some of the faulty logic processes that can stop us from changing? Here are 10 to look out for. Many of these thinking distortions come from teachings by Aaron Beck. If you want to know more, you can look up some of his books. Here's one of them. Number one, all or nothing thinking. This is polarized thinking where you see things are either good or bad or black and white categories. Things are in the extreme. If you're not perfect, then you're a failure. Can't be just good enough. So what's the solution? Widen your view. Aaron Beck calls it thinking in shades of gray. Step out of your narrow boundaries and consider that it only needs to be part white or part black to be acceptable. Number two, overgeneralization. You make a sweeping conclusion based on one incident or piece of evidence. If something bad happens, you expect it to keep happening. What's the solution? You need to be logical and consider the real evidence. Is it really that bad? Also, solicit the opinions of others as to whether your conclusions are valid. Ask them what their conclusions might be. Number three, jumping to conclusions. This is where you make negative conclusions without any support for your reasonings. There are two variations of this. One is called mind reading. This is where you conclude how someone else is feeling or you know their motives as if you could read their mind. You therefore do not check out whether your conclusion about them is true. The second variation is the fortune teller error. You conclude that events in the future with some particular person or organization will be negative without any fact checking or checking into with the person or organization that you're focused on. What's the solution? In any of these, the solution is to catch yourself generalizing and then ask good investigative questions. What could have contributed to their behavior? Look for alternative explanations that make more sense. Number four, magnification. You know, making everything a catastrophe or minimization. These are forms of extreme thinking. You either exaggerate things way beyond what they really are and worry about the what ifs, or you minimize the situation and ignore any possible negatives going on. <laughs> What's the solution? Like many of the others, you need to make it a habit to check on your own conclusions. A great model would be, if things are that bad or are that good, it can't be true. <laughs> be a detective and look for the truth. Number five, personalization. You conclude that what others are doing or saying is in some way related to you. You spend a lot of time comparing yourself to others to see who is better. What's the solution for that dilemma? Catch yourself and then reserve judgment until you check it out. Ask others. Go, go to the source. Think of a time when someone thought you were saying something about them and you weren't. Perhaps you are mistaken like that person was and you can give that person you are judging the benefit of the doubt. Number six, a mental filter. All you see is the negative aspects of a situation and filter out any positive. You go further and disqualify the positive. So all that is left is the negative. This is a negative bias. This negative view spreads and taints everything. So what's the solution? Stop and consider any positive aspects that you can see. Be an impartial observer. Be objective. Is there anything positive? Consider them for at least 30 seconds. 
That's right, 30 seconds. It takes that long for the brain to register a positive event. Enjoy the positive. Embrace it and accept it as part of yourself. Visualize yourself being more positive. Number seven, emotional reasoning. Because you feel a certain way, you assume it's true. You are embarrassed by, gi by giving a wrong answer and feel stupid. Therefore, you conclude that you are stupid. Well, what's the solution? Treat yourself the way you would a friend if they drew those kind of conclusions. You will show them where they are wrong. Do the same for you. Challenge the logic. Ask others what they think. You can feel bad about the situation, but avoid overcompensating with such faulty logic. Don't let it define you. Number eight, should statements. You have an internal list of shoulds or shouldn'ts that you judge yourself and others by. When these are violated, you get angry. You also feel guilty over any violation you have made. Similar to these are our lists of musts or oughts. Violating these result in false guilt, frustration, and resentment. What's the solution? Look for alternatives to your should or shouldn'ts. Is it really black and white? What other ways is there to accomplish your goal without all the rules? Let love and compassion figure out a solution. Number nine, labeling. This is where you see a flaw and then label yourself or someone else as a worst case personification of the flaw. You got a B on the test, so you consider yourself stupid. You did not make the team, so you're a loser. <laughs> This isn't just about yourself, but you can do it to others as well. It is highly negative and black and white in its logic. So what's the solution? Catch yourself doing it. Stop and ask yourself why you are angry and labeling yourself or others. What's the real issue? What am I really believing? Exaggerating only gives you an excuse to do nothing. Instead, ask yourself, how bad is it? What can be done to correct this? And then number 10, blaming. Other people are always in the wrong. Other people, events, places, or things are responsible for your negative situation. What's the solution? Take personal responsibility. Blaming doesn't solve anything. Get others to be impartial judges and get their opinion. The truth is, we can use any of these faulty logical thinking habits and keep ourselves from changing. Examine your situation. If change isn't happening, look at your thinking patterns and see if you aren't trapped in one of these. You can click below and get your free copy of Don't Let Faulty Logic Stop You From Change. Do it today and start making those changes that you need to.